I gotta confess, sometimes I wonder if I'm a little bit nuts to take on some of the projects that I do here at Camp Kennan. Just put a little bit right over the edge. Show me what you do, man. Kick your boots around and keep shoving, buddy. I mean, you really gotta love tortoises to do this. I'm Kevin Harkin, and today we're building a tortoise jungle gym and pond. And it ain't easy. <laughs> As a pro bike rider, action sports announcer, and off-road adventurer, I'm always on the go. But for my true passion as a reptile breeder, I created my own sanctuary in South Florida. This is Camp Kenneth. Today, we're gonna to be completing my Galapagos and Aldabra tortoise water feature to help them get some exercise. My good friend Mark Collette from Artistic Stone is leading the project. In the last episode, we arranged recycled concrete to frame the pond. Now we need to work fast before the four and a half tons of cement we just dumped hardens up on us. Right now the, the mud we have, it's a little soupy. So it actually works better sometimes when it's a little bit firmer. So as we work, it's gonna firm up a little bit. And Mark's actually got a really good technique. So we'll get that little wiggle going on. See the rocks disappear and the cream will come to the top. Get them rocks down. Ugly is beautiful, making it kind of creative. Don't try to play with it too long. Don't try to make it too pretty. Make it look natural. But as you do it, you make something that these tortoises are, when it firms up, it's gonna mimic rock, and it's also gonna be a great place for them to get a foothold. Let the rock tell you a story. As soon as it comes in, as soon as you start seeing the shape, work with that shape that you have. Don't try to fight it. Don't try to create your own shape. Just work with what you have. You got a hill coming down, you got a little slope, maybe put a couple terraces in it. Maybe bring it out of the corner. The main point is don't try to be a perfectionist. Ugly is beautiful. Once the preliminary shape and steps are set, we use a variety of tools to further shape and texture, including paint rollers and brush edges. So you can take, take the brush, and then you give it a little dab, and now you're giving it all these little imperfections, just like the rocks would have. Bam, just a little bit. Bam, right there maybe. Maybe up in here, maybe I can try and get that up, close it a little bit. Yeah, I'm just kind of getting this a little definition. You know, I like this. It's part of it. It's actually part of the foundation stone we have in there, but it kind of looks cool. And then when we get to coloring it, it's going to look really neat. We will stain it, and it looks just like an uh -uh, outcropping, you know? But these are the little details that are fun to mess with. Let it crack like a rock. Let it flow. If you see a grain in a rock that's already there while the cement is just drooping over, maybe you'll work with that instead of trying to fix it. It's sporadic. I love it. When you taught me how to do this, it felt, feels just like you gave me the keys to the universe, man. I can create Earth. <laughs> I love it. But it's going to be even sicker when you see these little guys, well, not so little guys, walking all over it and soaking. When I come home and I see tortoises enjoying a nice, long, cool soak, it just makes it all worth it. Hi, kid, but not totally. All this hard work really is a labor of love. All right, so I'm going to show you another reason why I'm building such a large tortoise pond, and uh, that has to do with the large tortoise behind me. This is Darwin. Come on down here, folks. Darwin is a 350-pound Galapagos tortoise. Now, I got her from a nice family that was living in Marin County, California. They had her for 22 years. Unfortunately, the woman's husband passed away, so she can no longer take care of such a large tortoise. So she called the Turtle Survival Alliance, of which I'm a member. You can check them out at turtlesurvival.org. I flew all the way to Northern California. We built a crate and uh, she made it home. We got her out here. So she is a beautiful animal, 22 years old, 350 pounds at the last time she was weighed. She's got some weight issues that I've been correcting over the last few months. I'm pretty excited about it. A lot of people think you gotta feed, feed, feed these tortoises because they eat all the time. But in fact, it's better to feed them a low nutrient diet less often. We're trying to let her here have more of a naturalistic uh, habitat. She's got so much uh, to walk around in here. She eats the cocoa plum leaves and all the weeds that pop up. In fact, she's one heck of a gardener. So she does my landscaping. She does really well. She loves cactus, but I don't think she's going to eat right now because I woke her up. So building this jungle gym, this jacuzzi for the tortoises is going to be really exciting because over time we're going to start to see her get stronger. Those hind legs are going to get much stronger and she's going to become an even healthier tortoise. 
like I said, I upset her a little bit. So we're going to let her rest and uh, we're going to get back to work. All right, so you can see we're almost done here with the Galapagos and Aldabra tortoise uh, bathing pond. Uh, Mark has already gone in and put a little etches in there, little paint marks just to give it some definition. That's going to blend in. So what are we up to now, buddy? We're going to throw some more color on it. We're going to get the uh, yellows to brighten up some pigments in there, uh, some maybe some peach colors that you like. Okay. And uh, we'll go from there. Darken up a few stones. Uh -huh. I'm not going to color all of them. I'm going to leave a couple untouched. I'm going to move fast. So you, do you always start with the light colors? Well, I start with the light colors because you can use them in the background. Always darken it up later. It's hard to get lighter later. Gotcha. Mark knows I like to keep things on the colorful side, so the next layer is a rich mango that he uses with a real natural touch. Follow the grain. I got the grain going. We got our cracks going, so we're going to follow that stuff. That's the layers, the sedimentary rock yeah. that we're going to try to create. We aren't using paint. It's actually pigment extracted from real stone, like iron oxides, which the cement will then absorb. Let's go with a little red, kick the feet off. We'll come back inside. We'll do the inside here first. Ooh, nice red, Frank. Nice red. Looks beautiful. Now that's antiquing. That's looking sharp. That's the third color. Then we'll go with grays and browns. Keep it nice and simple. These Galapagos turtles are going to have a beautiful pond to hang out in, huh? Yeah, they're tortoises though. Get all those hardcore herpers are going to be jumping all over you because you said turtle. I make the rock buddy, but I'm learning with the, about the tortoises. I like the idea of uh, getting a little educated as I'm working. I know I'm the one who's really getting the education. This guy's a true artist with the cement. Let's get it like really dark in a couple areas where that iron ore settled in, in, the, in the sedimentary rock and just lay it right in there. We'll just do it in spots here and there. That way it looks different. It doesn't look like wallpaper. It doesn't have the repetition of the same pattern over and over and over again. And the final step will make the cement look more like stone by adding brown to speculate and give it an aged look. I'm going to stay dark in a spot, dark in another spot, dark in the crevices, right up. Let that bleed in there. Now we'll have separation between the stones. We'll have shadowing. That looks outstanding. That's nice, how it's getting there. The black is really gonna set it off. See how that makes it stand out? Yes, that's my favorite part too, man. It's the real detailing. It helps give the depth to the stone. So, look at that, oh, look at that. Really, really gonna be beautiful here. But now there's a separation between all of the different, as you're saying, stones, you know? Even though it is, in fact, all one piece. Believe it or not, the project's total work time with three people including stone delivery and cement drying for this pond was a mere eight hours. The real test is to see how the homeowners like it. This is exactly what I envisioned, man. Check this out. You know, the tortoises throw a, a little spineless cactus there. They're exploring this. You got the Aldabra climbing. More importantly, we have the Galop exercising and just him getting up there you can see him straining those legs really exciting they're they're gonna enjoy this man probably not as much as i am it's just awesome that they uh they have a great environment a nice big place looks beautiful and uh, these guys look pretty happy right now they do look at him go yeah awesome man. this is tortoise four-wheel drive tortoise four-wheel drive all right, thanks so much for watching this episode of Camp Ken, and I hope you enjoyed it. Now listen, if there's something you want to learn a little bit more about, be it the Galop, the Aldabra, or how we built this here today, go ahead and fire off a question in the comments below. I'll get back to you. We would love to hear from you. And before I go, I want to talk to you a little bit about my Aldabra. I feel like we've left him out a little bit. This is Nostradamus. I got him in 2004, and he was just a little hatchling. This guy has grown so fast over the last 10 years, he's now close to 100 pounds. Now many of you may or may not know that the Aldabra tortoise are from the Seychelles Islands, and that's a small group of islands in the Indian Ocean. The Aldabra tortoise is also one of the more larger tortoises in the world. In fact, between the Galop and the Aldabra, only certain species of Galops can match the Aldabra's size. 600 pounds is not uncommon for some of the large males. It's truly an impressive animal, and I love Nostradamus. He's one of my favorite tortoises, but don't tell anybody.
I hope you enjoyed this episode of Camp Cannon. I'm going to let Nostradamus figure out just what did we do to his enclosure. He seems like he's liking it. He's going to switch it into low gear, and he'll take you home. So long, folks. <laughs>